Hello, V. Anton Sprawl here again talking about how you can learn to think like a programmer. This video is the conclusion of the problem presented in the previous video, so if you haven't checked out that video yet, start there so you know what we're talking about. At this point, I had a general solution in mind. I would scan the document twice. In the first scan, I would simply construct a table of all the figure labels, both in figure captions and references to figures in the text. Note that each figure label only appears once in the table, so I'm only really including the first references of each figure. Then I would replace each figure label in the document according to its position in the table. In this way, if I added a new figure to the middle of the chapter, as long as I gave it a unique label, it would acquire the correct number for its position in the chapter, and all later figures would be numbered accordingly, as you can see here. So the idea was pretty clear in my head, but now I had to turn the idea into code. As I stated in the previous video, I'm using an old version of Microsoft Word because that's just how I roll. This means I'm using the circa 2003 version of Visual Basic for Applications to write the macros needed to do my figure renumbering. Now, I've used some form of Visual Basic for a long time. In fact, the very first program I got paid to write was written in Visual Basic. But the truth is, it's been a long time since I've written code in Visual Basic for Applications, so I knew I needed to start with some small, simplified aspect of the overall task. Note that I'm showing you the real deal here, the actual pieces of code I wrote at each stage towards the solution. So I decided to write a macro that would simply count the number of times the word figure appeared in the document. Writing this was helpful on a number of levels. It helped me remember various aspects of the language syntax, such as that set statement, which is something like an object reference in a language like Java. I also didn't remember how to access the built-in objects that I would need to process the text in the document. I don't have a VBA reference on my shelf anymore, if indeed I ever had one, so I had to do a little googling to get what I needed. Anyway, this code worked fine once I got all the syntax down. Now, what I need to do for the actual finished macro is not just find appearances of the word figure, but those that are followed by a figure label, which for my purposes is a number, followed by a hyphen, followed by what is probably just another number, but could be an arbitrary string of characters. In order to find those, I knew I would be doing some wildcard matching, so I fiddled around using the find and replace box in Word itself until I got the wildcard string correct. With that in hand, I wrote this code, which simply finds the first figure label using that wildcard string, and then extracts the parts of the label before and after the hyphen, what I would call the chapter label and the figure label. Then I display them in a message box. Again, this is pretty straightforward because most of this is just putting pieces together that I've already worked on. The only new part of this code from the last stage is the string manipulation functions like mid, but I've been working with those since the VIC-20 days. Once this worked, I took the string manipulation portion of the code and made it into its own subroutine that when handed a whole figure label would extract the parts I needed. Now I think I'm ready to try building the table of figures. First I created a figure label record type, which is like a record or a class of public data members in other languages. And then I created an array of this type. Then I looked in the document, repeatedly calling the execute method of the find object, just as I did in the first subroutine. Only now, I extract the chapter and figure labels from each match, stuffing them into the next row of my array. I did some tests confirming with the debugger that the correct data was ending up in my array. So this worked, but it's not quite right because it stores every match in the array, and I don't want any duplicates to appear in the table. So I need a mechanism to find out whether a particular figure number is absent from the table before I try to add it. This is where a basic list class would come in handy because it would already have a method to do that. But it's not much trouble to write. So here's what I came up with. This should be sufficient proof that I am in fact showing you the code that I first came up with because this is not a particularly efficient solution. If I ever find a match inside the loop, there's no reason to continue searching the rest of the array. But at the time, 
I couldn't remember the VBA way to get out of a function early, and I didn't feel like it was important to look it up. In my book, Think Like a Programmer, I talk about how you have to adapt your development plans to suit your own programming style, your own strengths and weaknesses. I knew I wanted to keep my juices flowing, and I also knew I could trust myself to come back and clean up all this code when I had a solution that worked. So for me, I just pressed on because this function did what I needed it to do. So here's the second version of the table building code, now turned into a more useful subroutine by making the array and the record counter into output parameters. Now I was ready to start working on the second pass through the document, the one that would actually update the figure numbers. I realized I needed some way to find a particular figure in the table, because I was going to use that position number to determine the new figure number. So I wrote this little function, which returns the position in the array with the matching chapter number and figure label, or negative one if no match is found. And as with the other code, I'll need to rewrite it for efficiency later. Now I'm ready to write the main macro. As you can see, I build the table, and then at this point, I actually looked up how to jump out of a subroutine or function because I was worried that the later code might crash if the table was empty. You can also see that the code makes the assumption that the chapter number for each figure will be the same and simply grabs the chapter number of the first figure in the table to use for all the later figures. Then the main code is down here, which is similar to the code to build the table, but uses the new figure location function to make the new figure numbers. The cool thing was this subroutine actually worked the first time I ran it. That's not very common in programming, but it's not too surprising here because I built things up step by step. I made mistakes along the way, but in doing so, I avoided making mistakes at the end. Now, this code is not officially done. As previously stated, there are some efficiency issues, and, and although I've tested it, I can believe there may be some situations I haven't thought of that it wouldn't handle correctly. Also, some of the books I write have both figures and tables, so I could adapt the code to take care of both sets of labels at the same time. But I feel good that I have solved a problem with a program. If you're fairly new to programming, I do recommend things like macros as a way to get your feet wet with real-world programming. I mean, I guess this is not real-world in the sense that I don't have an employer or a client, and the potential limitations or pressures of that kind of situation. But a problem like this can be quite different from the programming assignment you would get out of an instructional book or a class, where the person who wrote the question already has a pretty good idea of how much work the solution entails. With a real-world problem, unless it's very similar to something you've already done, you don't really know exactly what you're dealing with when you get into it. Also, as soon as you gain some familiarity and comfort with one programming language, don't be intimidated by working with unfamiliar languages or programming environments. Once you start believing in your ability to think like a programmer, you start to realize that reaching a solution is just a matter of time and effort. So that's it. If you find these videos helpful, please do like and or subscribe and make suggestions for new videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.